Eight out of ten cats does countdown. John Richardson. John Locke. Claudia Winkleman. Joe Brand. Bill Bailey. Susie Dent. And Rachel Riley. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown, a show all about letters, numbers and conundrums. Did you know, for example, in 1623, the astronomer Galileo Galilei observed that the entire universe is written in the language of mathematics? He did very well, considering he was just a poor boy from a poor family. <laughs> A recent survey revealed that 61% of Brits can't speak a second language, and in Glasgow, many people can't even speak their first. <laughs> and the official name for man boobs is gyneomastia. You'll find gyneomastia in the dictionary and under your dad's T-shirt. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> OK, let's meet tonight's players. Uh, first up is Sean Locke. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sean's first post on Twitter was, and I'm quoting directly here, due to numerous imposters, I've been forced to set up a Twitter account. Now go f*** yourselves. <laughs> it's been retweeted over 4,000 times, probably because it's one of the nicest things you've ever said. <laughs> and joining Sean tonight is Joe Brand. Jo used to be a mental health nurse, so her and Sean go way back. <laughs> uh, jo, now, you've been on Countdown 84 times. Have I? Yeah, 84, 84 times. The proper one, not this bullshit. <laughs> the, now, you wrote the foreword for Susie Dent's last book. Yes. Uh, uh, saying, I love words and I love Susie Dent. What's, what's your favourite word? What's your favourite thing about Susie Dent? My favourite word is a Japanese word, sujigiri, which means trying out a new sword on a chance passerby. <laughs> Is that true? Is there any truth in that? No, it is true. It is... Do you know that one? I know it, yeah, really yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, favourite thing about Susie Dent? I like her Jerry Barton tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sean, the, the 30 second clock plays a big part in Countdown. Do you think anything else would be improved in life by setting it to 30 seconds? Yeah, what are your DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, if you were to do, like, a job swap for the day, whose job would you prefer, Rachel's or Susie's? Well, they're both women's jobs, aren't they? So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rachel, basically, there's a lot more ironing involved, isn't there? She's got to stand there. <laughs> but Susie, she just irons the front of her blouse. The rest of her's a complete mess. So I'd go for the less ironing. <laughs> but you do look a bit lonely up there sometimes, whereas... Susie has a friend. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of a little bit segregated on my own little island over here. Yeah, and I think I'd so. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be a bit lonelier on this show. <laughs> As in not playing it. <laughs> Up against them this evening, it's John Richardson! John's a lucky man. His girlfriend's brilliant. She's funny, beautiful, intelligent. She looks amazing first thing in the morning. And I love that thing she does with her tongue. Say <laughs> <laughs> <She> what? <laughs> and John's teammate, Claudia Winkleman. <laughs> At school, Claudia's nickname was Little Winkle. Crazy coincidence, me too. <laughs> uh, John, uh, do you think Claudia's going to be good tonight? No. I tell you what would help me. This is a genuine request. Can you not have the music? For, for the countdown clock? That... It's just stressful. <laughs> you with Yeah, me? what we want to create less stress is absolute piercing silence, as everyone watches on. <laughs> so do you think Claudia's going to be good, John, or are you not holding up? Well, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> One doesn't mean to be rude, but uh, I'm basing my assertion on what Claudia has said to me before we came out here. I was a bit angry with him. Yeah. I scared you a bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were very grabby. How did you scare him? What did you say? I oh, went up, grabbed his little head, and I said... Really grabbed <laughs> me by the head. <laughs> I've got this, hey, 
said, and I said, you've got to help me because I am 110. I watched this 75 years ago and I can't really remember. Anyway, John is in charge. I'm going to sit here, I'll stroke him, I will give him more... <laughs> It's not going to help. <laughs> what, what were you two just writing down there? Hmm? You were just doing a bit of scribbling. What were you, what were you writing? Well, I, I've got to go shopping quite early in the morning. It's <laughs> <laughs> time. OK. Claudia, you're, you're the mother of three. Do you use any words and phrases that are particular to your family at home? Yeah, well, we all talk nonsense. <laughs> the little one is, is weird about putting the words together, but it's not amusing. It's, I mean, it's amusing to me, it's not amusing to anybody else. He says, moustache. For most things, he wants a moustache. <laughs> I say, do you want toast? No, I want moustache. <laughs> I mean, children, can, I think children would be good at writing cards because when uh, my daughter was five, she sent us an Easter card and it said, Happy Easter, Mum and Dad, and don't forget, Jesus is dead. <laughs> Claudia, do you have a mascot today? I do. Now, yes, I do. It's a potato. <laughs> I love potatoes, and I'm not making this up. This is true life. Uh, just before my finals, I was going out with a boy, and he, for some reason, left a potato in my room, which sounds strange, but it wasn't at the time. And it sat next to my bed, and it sprouted, because finals, they went on forever, but it was a lucky potato, so I brought a potato. When you say it sounds weird, but it wasn't at the time, do you mean, like, <laughs> well, it was the 80s, we all left potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was going somewhere, I don't know, he left a potato. It was, it was like a secret but, code. But more importantly, he arrived with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a mascot, John? I've brought, uh, I just got over my uh, football fever recently and uh, went back out into the park and only come down with tennis fever, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Serious dose, mate. I'm all about the basketball. Oh, second serve, all about the tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Are you going to be trying to get lots of tennis words this evening? Yeah. All the long words, set, ball. <laughs> I'll be getting some pretty high scores today, Jimmy. <laughs> Do you know, it's been a year now since a Brit won Wimbledon. Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sean, have you got a mascot? Yes, I do, yeah. I've got uh, uh, someone who's an inspiration to me here. It's, uh, it's my Jeremy Clarkson doll. <laughs> Can't look away. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> really captured everything you need <laughs> in a Jeremy Clarkson doll. But it's just incredible. It amazes me because um, <laughs> what would he have to do to get sacked? <laughs> it's just incredible, isn't it? He's so bloody good. I reckon even if he got his even if he got his penis out on the show and waved it in an old lady's face. <laughs> People would just go, oh, what's he like? You know. <laughs> so he's very much an inspiration to me, and he's going to be helping me. Look, there he is walking. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted one of these. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Joe, uh, do you have a mascot? Uh, it's, it's the wrong colour. It's meant to be green, but we can't find any green toilet paper anywhere in the country, sadly. You said that like you were launching an appeal then. Did you know that we can't find any green toilet paper <laughs> anywhere in the UK? But the reason that I would have had green toilet paper is because when I first started stand-up, I had a really great gig one night and I looked for some sign of why it had been so great and I had three bits of green toilet paper in my pocket. <laughs> I decided that I would then have to have three bits of green toilet paper in my pocket every gig I did. Apart from tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> Over a dictionary corner, we've got Bill Bailey. Uh, Bill's the first person we've ever had on Cats Does Countdown who genuinely looks like he could be the winner of the real countdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you're an accomplished musician, obviously. Uh, if you could sum up the atmosphere on Countdown with a little tune, how would it go? Right, well, luckily, uh, he provided me with this high-tech piece of... Ki oh, Christ. Uh, <laughs> the CBB's keyboard. Because um, <laughs> I think that, you know, the, the tune... 
that's kind of quite, you know, you're right, it is a bit, it's tension, isn't yes. it? It's a bit tense. Nerve wracking. So, in that last bit, <laughs> that bit is a bit scary. I would change that to a more lilting Irish theme, sort of like. <laughs> Still, of course, Susie Dent. <laughs> Susie has a regular slot on Countdown called The Origins of Words, in which she explains the derivations of well-known words and phrases. And that's just one of the boring bits of Countdown we won't be bothering with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, is it true that Joe Brand is, is to blame for your email account going down recently? Uh, yeah, it wasn't really Joe's fault. Joe and I are, are trying to write a book together. And we're looking at the uh, differences between the sexes in words. And Joe innocently, I think, asked me for the top insults for, for men. So I looked them up, sent them off to Joe. And about an hour later, I got this red flashing alert saying that my account had been suspended. <laughs> um, and I've got it here. In fact, if you want what, to hear what yeah, they were. What were the terms? OK, so uh, from the late 1500s, there was prick. Um, <laughs> that was a term of endearment. That's why I quite liked it. So it's a mm. bit like darling. So you'd say, hello, my prick. <laughs> That's what I told my husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have knobheads, then we have plonker, which first meant something large of its kind. Um, <laughs> then schmuck, then twat. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion um, in the 17th century about what a twat actually was, so for a while it was thought I had to be... that when I was a teenager, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Go on. It was thought that it was part of a nun's habit, so there are lots of quotes for old nun's twat that you will find. The earliest, the earliest record of twat is um, someone saying to his wife, "Give not male names to such things as thine, but I think thou hast two twats, a wife of mine." <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I've got two twats, yes I have, yes I have. <laughs> <laughs> that, old, that old country's fair song. They'd stand outside pubs saying how many twats they had. <laughs> twat braggers, they were known as. I've got more twats than you, I've got more twats than you, twats than you, twats than you. And in charge of the numbers is Rachel Riley. <laughs> Rachel thinks about numbers 24 7 and sometimes the other numbers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, do you ever get countdown fans asking you to help them with their maths problems? Uh, yeah, sometimes. I mean, mostly it's just gibberish. Um, but occasionally you get sent a really good maths problem. So I took one to the park last week. Had a good go on that. <laughs> <laughs> This problem means what I think it means, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm really nervous. I'm a bit of a Bill Bailey stalker tonight, so I just want to get it out there early, but I've seen him, like, five or six times live, and I'm just a bit nervous tonight. OK. Um... <laughs> <laughs> just, just I've got a few, I've got a few <laughs> maths problems I need to... Uh, <laughs> through. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a bit of a crush on Bill? Well, not quite. I've, I've just, just more love, you know. There was a headline once that, um... I'm signal. I'm signal. <laughs> oh my God, you've got it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret, Bill? What's going on? It's just two twats. It's... <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Oh, got grade six clarinet. I mean, uh... I think if Rachel was found peering into your kitchen window, you would still be the one that got arrested. <laughs> That's a very good point, yeah. yeah. OK, tonight the prize the teams will be competing for is this... Oh, talking boy. Countdown Dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Would you demonstrate for us? Wagwan, greeting in the Patois dialect. Example, Wagwan, my brother. <laughs> Can you give us another example? Butters, meaning ugly, when used to describe a person. Example, that boy is well butters. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's count down, everyone. Time for the first game. John and Claudia, you're first to pick the letters. Before we begin, I need my pen. Um, could you bring my pens, please? <laughs> Yeah. 
getting very cheap. I got him from the French Open, because otherwise they end up in shelters. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think we should start with? But this is so exciting. Can we really do it? <laughs> yes, we can. Otherwise, yes. Honestly, Claudia, it wears off. <laughs> <laughs> May we have, if that's okay, should we, let's begin. You stop hitting me and we'll get on with the game. <laughs> okay. Let's have th three vowels. Oh, one at a time. Oh, one at a time. Okay, one at a time, okay time, thanks, please. Lord. I. Another vowel. E. Should we go continent now? <laughs> this is the best <laughs> fun I've ever had. <laughs> Your yeah. husband's going to be devastated. <laughs> continent, please. Continent? S. Whatever it is, continent. <laughs> okay, yes, and now some more. Let's go for Seven some more. Another continent, please. Okay. T. T. T? And a towel, please. <laughs> uh, another consonant, please. K. Who? K. I've got one! Another vowel, please. O. No, no more vowels. This is madness. Okay. <laughs> Let's have the other ones. Consonant, please. M. Oh, come on. Come on. And another consonant, please. C. We need a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> She's changed her tune. And another vowel, please. And the last one. I. And for the first time today, here's the countdown clock. Yeah. Claudia, how many letters? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what happened to you? I was just working out, what? <laughs> I got five. Sean, how many letters? Five. Joe? Uh, two. <laughs> Joe, you're two. Uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll just check it. Um, Susie, is it a word? Um, yes, you could extend it a little bit and have it. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you're five? It's the words you're going to like, Jimmy. It's moist. <laughs> <laughs> moist. Okay. okay. Claudia. Yes. I'm particularly proud of one word. You know, you were talking earlier about what my kids say, which is weird stuff. They still say mices. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> mices, deal with it. Is that a word? <laughs> no. No, no, I can tell you now it isn't. <laughs> Kites is a word. Kites is a word, yeah. Uh, jo John, you're eight. Well, it's the word that you use when you're getting dressed. Uh, you put your underpants on and then, of course, it's sock time. <laughs> <laughs> is sock time...? Sock time? No. No. No, no, sorry, no. <laughs> what could they have had? Could they have done better? Ickiest. Ickiest. That, that's the ickiest oh, word. Oh, that's the ickiest. Oh, that's ickiest and moist were up there. Brilliant. OK, so, at the end of that, both teams have five points. <laughs> On to our first numbers round. OK, Sean and Joe, your turn to pick the numbers. One for the top and uh, five from anywhere else. One please. big one Great. and five Four. little ones. Thank you, Joe. And for this round, they are one, three, six, two, eight, and the big one, 50. And the target, 851. And your time starts now. So the target was 851. John, do you get it? Yes. Claudia? 
Could you, uh, could you have sounded any more surprised? What? No, you're adorable, obviously. I got really far away. I was so proud of myself. I got 8.19. Boosh. 8.19. OK, Sean, do you get it? I think so, yeah. Joe, did you get it? I think so. Sean, how, how did you think you got it? I think I got it all com wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get 551 for some reason. Occasionally, I get a uh, hundred blindness. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, how do you think you got it? Um, two times fifty. Two fifty. Hundred. Yep. Uh, hundred plus six. Yep. Uh, times eight is eight four eight hundred and forty-eight eight. plus three. Very nice. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> John, did you do it in the same way? No. I said 8 plus 6 plus 3 is 17. Yep. Times by 50. 8.50. Plus 1. Well done. Oh. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Ten points each. Yeah. OK, so Sean and Joe have 15. Uh, John and Claudia also have 15. Time to go across the dictionary corner. Bill, what have you got for us? Well, uh, I have here some correspondence I had with the AA. Uh, the Automobile Association, not the, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and they, uh, I, I didn't renew my membership, uh, because I didn't have a car, so it seemed pointless. <laughs> but they, um, but they wrote to me with an increasingly, uh, more sort of threatening tone. Right. And the first, the first letter was very sort of, like, jokey. So it said, Dear Mr Bailey, it seems you've chosen not to renew your AA membership. I assume this must be an oversight. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you. And then the next one was a little bit more, there's a little bit of a threat. It was, Dear Mr Bailey, I'm very concerned that I've not heard from you about your AA membership, which is about to lapse. Can you contact us ASAP, as you will soon have no cover and be vulnerable, like a hermit crab, soft and easy pickings for predators without its protective shell? <laughs> and on the last one, they really went the turn. Dear Mr Bailey, I'm shocked that you would be reckless enough to leave the warm embrace of the AA <laughs> and strike out into the unknown, a cold and unforgiving place beyond our reach, where your future is at best uncertain, at worst, a living nightmare. <laughs> By leaving the AA, you have placed you and your family in mortal danger. <laughs> you have set the countdown on a ticking time bomb of despair. Picture the scene. A stormy night, a late model Renault Kangoo with a malfunctioning distributor cap. <laughs> On the verge of the B3116, just where it joins the A39. Terror stalks the verge. That stricken vehicle is yours. The terrified driver, you. <laughs> In your panic, you clutch the one lifeline out of this Dantean circle of hell. Your only hope, the AA. But then you remember, you've cancelled the membership. You collapse on the verge, weeping, crying, the bitter tears of regret, shouting, why? Why did I forsake them to die here alone? <laughs> Please let me know if you reconsider. <laughs> Everyone. And here is your teaser. The words are Sticky Joe, and the clue is, we'll give you a good time. So, Sticky Joe will give you a good time. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser, the words were Sticky Joe, the clue was, we'll give you a good time. It was, of course, Joystick. So both teams have 15 points. OK, time to mix things up a little bit. They've been playing in teams so far, but this next game is just for Joe and John. So, Joe, your turn to choose. Oh, um, constant players. Thank you, Joe. Y. Vowel. E. Thank you. Another vowel. O. Yo. Consonant, please. M. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and another consonant, please. R. Yomara. Uh... <laughs> I imagine that's a real annoying bloke at home. Someone's <laughs> trying to play cat, they're sitting in the armchair just going, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Eventually gets hit in the face with something. <laughs> consonant, please. M. Uh, another consonant. T. Uh, vowel, please. E. Oh, 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 consonant, please. And the last one. S. And your time starts now. <laughs>
Sean, what have you got? Uh, <laughs> six. Joe? A risky seven. Oh, John, you're six. Uh, memory. That stinks. Oh, sorry about that. I was just doing some science. <laughs> uh, Joe? Uh, remote. Oh, lovely. Oh. oh, nice one. We have remotes as well. Mm. Well done, Joe. Thank so, yes. you, Susie and Bill. <laughs> Seven points to Joe and Sean. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that, John and Claudia have 15. Sean and Joe are in the lead with 22. <laughs> Time now for Sean and Claudia to go head to head. Claudia, your turn to pick the numbers. Um, your choice, not well. What? What is? What am I? What am I? <laughs> Can I just confirm at this point that I'm not involved in this round? You you are not involved in this. It's. It... Can I? I'm gonna have a break. You carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Claudia, pick the numbers. Uh, one big one and the rest little. One big one, five little ones coming up. And they are nine. Wait! Eight. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Let me know. You right? Carry on? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Two, three, and 25. And the target, 579. Okay, your target is 579. Your time starts now. <laughs> John, finish that banana in 15 seconds. Oh, you please. <laughs> come on, you've got 10 more seconds. Quick, come on. Come on, you can do this. I can't! I don't think I've done it correctly. Why would you go one more? Well, I'm having a nice... All over the place. So the target was 579. What happened, Claudia? What I wanted to do was add 25 to 6. Work with me, genius. Oh, do, do Times we, that by do you want to... nine. No, no, don't ignore me. And then <laughs> I was going to take away, add three and two, take that away. It would have been close, but instead. <laughs> <laughs> what number do you have? Generally, what people do at this point, they just tell me what number they got. Oh, I think I've got one thousand one hundred and seventy-nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, I got calibrates. <laughs> <laughs> What number did you get, Sean? I didn't get 579 or anywhere close to it. <laughs> no points to anyone. Rachel, could it be done? Uh, yes, you could have said 25 times 8 is 200. 9 minus 2 is 7. Take that away for 193 and times it by 3. Yeah. <gasps> yeah that's right. That is genius. <laughs> how, much, how much longer has Rachel had than we had? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> OK, time to go across to Dictionary Corner. Bill, what have you got for us this time? Well, Jimmy, I've been recently uh, travelling in uh, Indonesia. All right. And, um, you know, I like to try and pick up a little bit of the language. So uh, I bought this book. Uh, it's called Practical Dialogues. And it's supposed to be helpful little conversation starters. But the trouble is they're not actually that practical in terms of conversation starters because they do require the other person to join in a very specific way. I'll give an example. <laughs> These are all genuine. Uh, let me show you this one. I quite like this one. Uh, which way up is the, the pen going? Here we go. Tell me about plasma. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other person has to say, plasma is clear yellowish fluid in which the blood cells are carried. <laughs> and you say, oh, uh, what is blood? <laughs> and then they tell you, they say, it is a red liquid flowing throughout the body. And then they say, what happens if a man's heart stops beating? He dies. <laughs> anyway, cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> what does fire do? It burns. <laughs> what catches fire easily? Paper, hair, cotton. <laughs> Showed your house against fire? Yes, I have. <laughs> what is a fire alarm? An apparatus for making no the outbreak of fire. Is fire destructive? When fire is angry, it can destroy. <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> <laughs> one more. Um, OK, this is my favourite. This, um, this is one about smuggling. This is great. Well, check this out. Mm, hang on. Is smuggling forbidden? 
See, this, I think this conversation is about someone who's thinking about smuggling <laughs> and is just chatting to someone on a bus to hope that they know. <laughs> is smuggling forbidden? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Why? It gets good secretly and illegally. What do you call a person who smuggles? A smugglers. <laughs> many smugglers in the world, aren't there? Yes, there are. <laughs> what would happen if I smuggle opium into Malaysia? You would be hanged. <laughs> the scores at the moment are John and Claudia have 15, Sean and Joe have 22. And here is your teaser. The words are a wet romp, and the clue is slips out of the backside. That's <laughs> a wet romp slips out the backside. See you after the break. Welcome back. The answer to the teaser. The words were a wet romp. The clue was slips out the backside. It was, of course, tapeworm. <laughs> OK, before we go on, he doesn't work here anymore, but he keeps on turning up. Please welcome Joe Wilkinson. Interested. <laughs> so, Joe, what have you been up to? Oh, well, uh, since you fired me, you prick, I have <laughs> got myself a new job. Uh, as you can see, I now coach a synchronised swimming team. <laughs> <laughs> going well. It's going very well, actually. We're, uh, we're hoping to qualify for the London Olympics. If, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the, the London Olympics have been and gone. You don't have to talk some shit, Jimmy. <laughs> Is there, is there any chance you could uh, show us one of the routines? Fight, <laughs> 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 yeah, all right, go on. <laughs> go on you get. No kissing about. I'll slap your legs. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm hoping this routine is the one that gets us to London 2012. So. <laughs> Hope you like it. Right, come on, guys. Nose clips on. Teach them to swim. You properly found your calling. Yeah, I'm weirdly good at that. <laughs> okay, on with the game. Uh, John and Claudia, your turn to choose the letters. I feel like I got overexcited last time, and you should do no, it in I a think... more grown up manner. No, excitement is good. You just let yourself loose. Okay, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> just kind of here for support. I have no, no idea what that is, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Got a stitch. <laughs> Does he need anything? Is he all right? That's as good as he gets. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll go with a couple of vowels and then yeah. the others. Oh. Okay. A. Yep. Mm. I. Mm. The others. Yes, please. J. Oh, love it. Carry on. T. Uh, now I like it less. <laughs> Stick Which another one? one up there. Consonant, please. S. S. And a vowel, please. <laughs> A. Oh, well, that's useful. And a consonant, please. P. Oh, I love a P. And a vowel, please. <laughs> o. I could see taps. And a consonant, <laughs> please. D. OK, your time starts now.
what have you got? <laughs> John, how many, how many letters? Six. Claudia? Six. Sean? I got a five. Joe? A five. Oh, Joe, you're five. Stayed. Stayed. OK. Sean, you're five. Uh, stayed. I've got the same as Joe. John, you're six. Patios. <laughs> Patios? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite impressed. Claudia, you're six. I don't think it's a proper word. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Patois. P-A-T-O-I-S. Fantastic. Best That's of the lot. Uh, so, six points to John and Claudia. Could they have done any better? Well, there's two sixes that uh, you could have had adopt or adapt. OK, so at the end of that, uh, John and Claudia have 21, Sean and Joe have 22. <laughs> On to another numbers round. OK, Sean, Joe, you're the bigger numbers. Uh, the one from the top. Are you... I don't know why I even ask anymore, but... I'd love to help, but I'm in the middle of choosing a new toilet roll cover. <laughs> <laughs> Take a while. <laughs> Two from the top and then four from everywhere else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so seven, eight, another what, eight. What are you thinking, Joe? And another seven. Too tarty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rushing this. <laughs> All right, the large ones, 50 <laughs> and 25. This might be a hard one. The target, 791. Your time starts now. Come on, Joe. The yellow one. Go with the yellow one. Oh. Orange? No! <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. So the target was uh, 791. Uh, did you get it, Claudia? I got 2,550. <laughs> uh, John, did you get it? I got 793. Sean, did you get it? I got either 814 or 804. Okay, either way, more than 10 away. Uh, Joe, did you get it? No. Okay. John, how did you do it? Uh, 8 plus 8 times 50. 8 plus 8, 16 times 50. Minus 7. 800 minus 7. Yep, 2 away. Come on! Good again. Could it be done, Rachel? Um, yes. Uh, you could have said 8 times 8 is 64. Add to 50 for 114. Times oh. that by 7 for 798 and then oh. take away the other 7. Oh, oh right, right. <laughs> How long? How long did she have? <laughs> <laughs> Makes you sick. Makes you bloody sick. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that, Sean and Joe have 22. John and Claudia are in the lead with 28. <laughs> Time to go across once again to Dictionary Caller. Bill, what have you got for us? All right, well, uh, Jimmy, I've got a little thing here I picked up when I was uh, on tour in Australia. Uh, you know, so I thought you might like this. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a didgeridoo. And I'd like to play you uh, <laughs> the 100 greatest didgeridoo hits. <laughs> First one. Who could forget this? <laughs> one for lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when this was a hit? <laughs> and what about the up tempo? <laughs> <laughs> and of course the Christmas hit. <laughs> There you go. Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's actually a didgeridoo. It might even be a tusk of a mastodon. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a straw. Oh, yeah. I don't think you're meant to blow. I think you suck. Oh, you suck. Oh, right. Hang on. Let's try it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, everyone. Thanks very much.
And here's your final teaser. The words are ass crank, and the clue is causes a lot of damage. So ass crank causes a lot of damage. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser, the words were ass crank and the clue was causes a lot of damage. It was, of course, ransacks. OK, time for our final letters game. Sean and Joe, your turn to choose. Uh, a consonant, please. G. I bought some uh, half-time oranges for a okay. bit of energy. Oh, I couldn't get oranges, so I've just done a couple of pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I fucking bother. <laughs> and another one, please. No. no, I'm not doing it. I'm <laughs> just standing up. T. A vowel, please. A. Another vowel. U. Uh, another vowel. O. <laughs> uh, consonant. D. Sometimes I wonder what the point of me is. <laughs> another one. N. Angie's. <laughs> vowel, please. Let's just do four. E. <laughs> uh, Joe, what should I have? Have a pop a pop a consonant on. All right, I'll pop what a consonant. What do you want? Oh, now he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> and an S. <laughs> okay, your thirty seconds starts now. How many? I've got two sixes. It's exciting. Oh, yes, it is. John, how many you got? Well, a very risky seven. A risky seven? Yeah. You live dangerously. Sean, what you got? Seven. A confident seven. Joe? A seven. Ah! Oh. OK, Claudia, let's hear your favourite six. Staged. Staged. What was your other one out of interest? Go day, which is something that you sew into a dress, which is G-O-D-E-T-S. I was very pleased with myself. <laughs> I'm very pleased with you, too. Oh. Terrific. Uh, John. Snouted. Snouted. Mm. Yes. Is there, as an adjective, not as a verb, something can be snouted? Yeah. Can be Very snouted, good. yes. Yeah. <laughs> snouted. Huge. <laughs> OK, Sean, what's yours? Tongues. Oh, that's lovely. Tongue. <laughs> He's okay. clever. Well done, Sean. Um, Joe. Well, uh, uh, tongues and all, but I did wonder about tongued. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Susie, could they have done any better? Tangos, but, uh, no, I mean, that's... Well, that came up a couple of weeks ago. Yeah? That's how long I've been playing this pissing game. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Dictionary Corner being going, you could have had tangos, and I remember thinking, yeah, I could have done. Or I could have been an explorer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Sean and Joe have 29, uh, John and Claudia have 35. OK, fingers on buzzers, it's time for today's crucial countdown conundrum. This will decide the winner today. Your time starts now. Limericks. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yay! Oh. Yeah. Thank you. So the final scores are John and Claudia have 35 points, but tonight's winners are Sean and Joe with 39 points. Congratulations. You've won a countdown talking dictionary. Look at that. Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Inspired jibber jabber from Sean Locke on Sunday night. Purple Van Man on stage from 10 o'clock. Friday night dinner served next, and Jim's dingaling could be coming out a little the worse for wear. <laughs>